Hello everybody and welcome to your Unit 0 review. Yesterday you guys did your station review so you should have put your answers on that answer sheet that I gave you in your lesson and then submitted them. Well today I'm going to give you the answers to those so that you can use them to study. So your test is coming up, it's going to be on Monday. Um, and since I'm not there with you to help you review, I'm going to make this video to help you do that. And then if you have any questions after watching this, if you'll just reach out, send me an email. Um, if you need clarification or anything, I can help with that too. But I figured by giving you the answer key and explaining some of these things, it can clear up anything you might have had difficulty with. All right, so I'm just going to go down and go over these answers. It might have to be a two-part video, but we'll see um, how far we get in this one. So station one was class rules and procedures, and I'm just going to go down and I'm going to go over the answers with you. So station one, class rules and procedures. Question one says, what is the most important rule of the classroom? And it's number one. So always be respectful. Of your classmates. teacher and yourself. Okay, that's my number one rule. How do you know whether you can have your cell phone out during class? So remember we have the light at the front of our board and if the light is on, you may have your cell phone out. Okay, so you guys know when it's off, you should not have your cell phone out for any reason at all. Okay, I'll turn these red so we can do it. So true or false, your teacher will pass out all the handouts that you need for class. This is definitely false. You guys know that when you come into class, your handouts are located at the front of the room. So you do not have to, so I don't have to pass out the handouts to you. Um, I've noticed I know I haven't been there this week, but I've noticed that some of you are not picking them up when you come in. You have to pick them up, okay? I'm not going to hand them out to you. You have to pick up your handouts when you come into the room, okay? It makes everything easier. It's easier for you, and it's easier for me. How many points are taken off each day that assignments are late? That's going to be five points a day for up to five days. So Monday is your test day. And that means that all of your unit zero work is due Monday, all right? So anything that we did in unit zero, which has been a, quite a bit, it's due Monday, including your notebook checks. So after Monday, if it's not in, it starts accruing those five points a day. And then after five, five school days after Monday is when everything closes and you can no longer turn in unit zero work, okay? And then five says just explain the exit procedure of the classroom. So you stay seated until the bell rings. Then you push your chair in. And then you exit calmly and quietly. Perfect. And you guys have been doing um, a really good job with that. So those are the rules and procedures. There are only a couple of questions on your test of the rules and procedures. So if you review these, you should be a-okay. All right, station two is lab safety. It says using the image below, identify three students who are disobeying the lab rules and explain why their actions are dangerous. There's a lot here. I'm not gonna type all of this out, but I will go over a few of them with you. Um, so let's see, here's Sue. If you see Sue, she has her hair down. So remember, we always tie our hair back in the lab, and she has her hair going through a Bunsen burner. That's dangerous because it could catch her hair on fire, especially if you have hair products in your hair, um, and nobody really wants to be set on fire, right? So that's an issue. Um, John here, he has his um, lab equipment in the water, but if we see here's an electrical outlet, we never want to put an electrical plug near water because you could get electrocuted. Um, Joe here, he's drinking chemicals out of a straw and he looks like he's getting pretty sick. Remember, you never want to ingest or inhale any chemical in the lab, especially if you don't know what it is. Um, let's see. Tim and I think 
I don't know what his name is. But these two kids right here, they are horse playing. Remember, you always want to act calm in the lab um, and make sure you're doing the procedure exactly. If you start messing around in the lab and you're, you're you know, horse playing, roughing around, you could knock over equipment, you could cause something to break, you could hurt yourself, and that is no good. Um, and then one more, let's see, here's Bob. He broke this beaker and he picked it up and then he cut himself. So remember, if you are, um, if you break glass, the first thing you want to do is let me know because you definitely don't want to handle that yourself. Okay, perfect. And then question two says, what are the two most important rules of our lab classroom? So no horse playing and always tell Miss Ramsey if something goes wrong. Okay, and that's it. So make sure you're following the procedures perfectly. You're not, you know, you're adhering to all the rules of the lab room. And then also if something goes wrong, you spill something, break something, hurt yourself. The first thing you want to do is let me know. All right, station three is on scientific method. So there is a scenario here and we need to identify the different components of the scientific method. So remember the scientific method is just a way for um, scientists to carry out experiences or experiments, sorry, not experiences, experiments and answer questions that they might have. So it says SpongeBob noticed that his favorite pants were not as clean as they used to be. His friend Sandy told him that he should try using Clean O detergent, a new laundry soap she found at Sale Mart. SpongeBob made sure to wash one pair of pants in plain water and another pair in water with the Clean O detergent. After washing both pairs of pants a total of three times, the pants washed in the Clean O detergent did not appear to be any cleaner than his pants washed in plain water. So what was the problem SpongeBob wanted to investigate? So he wanted to know would Clean-O get his favorite plant, favorite pants more clean? That was his question. Is the clean -O detergent better? That's what he's trying to find out. So question two says, what was SpongeBob's hypothesis? Remember, you always want to write your hypothesis if, in an if-then statement. And it always needs to be related to the question that you're asking. So SpongeBob's hypothesis would be if I wash my pants in Clino, then they will come out very clean. Okay, that's an example of how you could write that hypothesis. Or you could say, you know, if I wash my pants in Clean O, then they will come out cleaner than without it. You know, some kind of iteration of that. It doesn't have to be exactly worded, but the spirit needs to be the same. So three says, what is SpongeBob's control group? So remember, a control group is what you compare your experimental value to. So here, the control group is just going to be the pants washed in plain water. Because the experimental group that you're testing is the detergent. So you want to have a comparison without the detergent so you can see if the detergent is actually making a difference. So the control group, remember, is just what something would be in its natural state without the addition of anything else. So this is going to be the pants washed in plain water. What is the independent variable? So remember, the independent variable is the thing that I change. It's the thing that you manipulate. So in this experiment, SpongeBob was manipulating the detergent, okay? So he manipulated the detergent, and that is the thing he was changing, and that is the independent variable. And five says, what is the dependent variable? Remember, the dependent variable changes in response to the independent variable. You can always say it's also the thing that we measure. So the thing, the dependent variable here would be the cleanliness of his pants. So I'm just going to say how clean the pants got. So how clean the pants were depended 
on the detergent that was used. Okay, so the cleanliness of the pants was also what he was measuring. And then six says, what was should SpongeBob's conclusion be? It said he didn't notice a difference. So he would say the Clino detergent is not better than plain water for washing my pants. That would be the conclusion because he didn't notice that there was any other, that his pants were any more clean with the detergent. Okay? Perfect. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this video here, and then we'll do stations four, five, and six in the next one.